everybody. Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com in conjunction with phillyisugly.com, which is a time-lapse film that I shot and have been shooting, but I, I shot here in the summer of 2013. You can check it out at phillyisugly.com. Today we're going to talk about storyboarding. And uh, the reason that this is important is because once uh, we've created all of our video clips using After Effects, we have all of these fairly large video clips. And a lot of times what I would do is process multiple sequences at once, you know, five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 10 or 15 uh, sequences of images at a time. So I would get these huge video files, you know, 10 gigabytes, 20. I had one video clip that was 33 gigabytes. That was the biggest video clip. Um, and that was, I think, 20 sequences that I lined up and exported in, uh, from After Effects. So instead of going through and chopping up all those video clips and then resaving the video files in Premiere or anything like that, I went into my the, the, the folders with all the images and I just exported one single image from every location uh, that I shot so I could get a good visual representation of all of these different locations. And I've got 80 of them here. Now there were about 160, 170 that I thought were usable and fairly good, uh, but I whittled it down to about 80 that I figured would make it into the film and most of these are in the final finished film. Some of them aren't. Uh, but then what I did was I went about arranging them uh, here in the bridge to create a cool storyboard of colorful images and things like that. And the basic way I thought about it was I wanted the film to go from very early morning to the middle of the night. So it goes, you know, early morning, late morning, afternoon, evening, night. That's sort of how the film progresses. And all these different locations, I tried obviously to represent the city uh, as best I could in a bunch of different ways from the historical and the architectural standpoint to some of the more modern stuff, to some of the parks, and, and just all kinds of different things about the city that I thought were cool. So what I'm doing here in Bridge is just using, uh, using Bridge to line up images and create this very visual storyboard. So beyond knowing that I wanted all of the morning sequences to be together and the afternoon sequences and the evening and night sequences to be together, the way I sort of push this stuff together is I basically want I wanted the film to be something that's very comfortable to watch as well as having great visual qualities about it. So I wanted the, the imagery to be beautiful, but I wanted even the transition from image to image to be beautiful. So if, for instance, I didn't want to go from a very green image like this image here to something that's more red and blue, like this image here. Or even from green to something that's very magenta. Wow, these very magenta images are great and stunning images of the sunrise. Great, great stuff that we caught. I didn't want to go from something that was very green right to that. So instead I went green to sort of a green and orange to more of a purple and orange to then something that had more purple and orange and red, then to the magenta. So I go from the green to the magenta over the course of three or four frames, just like that. And the way that we can begin to move images around very easily in the bridge, I'm actually going to zoom out so we can see a few more thumbnails, is we can go up here to view and choose sort and set this to manually. So when we're sorting these manually, I can grab any one of these images and drag it wherever I want and it's just going to stick. Okay, so let's say I wanted to go, okay, we're going to go from orange to some more orange to here's something with the sun rising. So we've got orange, orange, orange. We've got some green here in the trees so we could take advantage of that and segue to something that's more green, right? And there's a little bit of color in the sky. So we go to something that has some color in the sky, back to something that's a little bit more purplish, maybe like the traffic shot here. It's very dark, very purplish, like this shot here. And we could choose something like that that's very purple. And then go to this very stunning sunrise shot, right? And then choose maybe this ship shot, which is kind of bluish. Then go with this shot of the museum, because we've got kind of some blues that are going to fade across. We go to this very green shot. Actually, I'll take that shot there, because we've got some sort of magenta in the sky. Uh, we can go to the green shot next if we wanted. Or we could go to the shot that's very sort of got some orange orange qualities that we've, we'd be picking up from the sunrise here reflecting off the side of the building, right? So we get some of that orange and some of the orange, go from blue, and then maybe take this very blue shot of the sunrise, uh, well, maybe a later morning shot of the city. Uh, and then we go to sort of this desaturated shot of Independence Hall. So these images will work together a little bit better. We go from the, there's a lot of orange and red here in the Independence Hall shot. There's a lot of orange, red, and magenta in the shot of the softball field. Actually, I would probably move the art museum over there because we have more of sort of that old olden architecture, that old style architecture, as well as, you know, a lot of those oranges and reds, and then orange and reds moving to a more modern architecture, but still there's an old stadium in there as well, which is cool. We can go with the, the orange and reds of City Hall at sunrise, then we can go with kind of this glowing orange of the bridge, and then we could probably drop this green shot back in here, 
and and this is kind of how I just sort of finessed it. So I'm looking for ways that I can sort of mix these colors. So this this shot here of these boats has a lot of green in it, but there also is a little bit of kind of orange and maybe just a just a kiss of magenta in the sky. So that works perfectly with this next shot, which has all this green in the foreground and a lot more magenta and blue in the sky back there. So then once I had all this stuff lined up, and I'm going to zoom out, let's say this is exactly how we wanted everything to be, I can just select all of the images by clicking the first one up here, holding down my shift key, selecting the last one, and then go tools, batch rename, and just choose a sequence number, two digits, I'm going to start it at one, and say hey, rename them all. And it's going to go through and rename all of those images just the way I want them. And then if I go ahead and choose view, sort by file name, it's going to go ahead and line them up just like we line, had them lined up manually because by file name, one it would start with one and it would end down here with 79. So that's great. And that is, long story short, how I did the storyboarding, no pun intended. Uh, and, and that's how you can do it. It's a very, very effective, very kind of cool way to do storyboarding using Bridge if you have these visual frames. And again, I got these by just opening up a RAW file and either bringing it into Photoshop and saving out a JPEG image. These are just very small JPEGs, right? This is the full size, you know, 1500 or 1600 wide by 1000 pixels tall or something like that. So nothing huge, uh, very light files, easy to move around quickly, and you can create a visual storyboard. So then when it came time to edit in Premiere, I could just keep referencing back to this. All right, what clip do I need next? I need the clip of the bridge with the bench. Okay, I'm going to grab that clip. I can place it in place. Then I'm going to go to the plateau shot with the tree in the foreground here. All right, I can drop that that video clip in and so on and so forth until I had everything in place and then it's just a matter of tweaking your video clip to the soundtrack or adjusting things a little bit here and there so all of your video cuts look right and everything is meshing together uh, as well as you could ever want it to mesh together. So that is it for this one. Thanks for sticking around and checking it out. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more free video tutorials. And also you can check out phillyisugly.com to check out uh, the film project and then let me know what you think about it. If you like it, that's super, super cool. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you later.